Scorpio fonts for visiting are, this is your reading for, uh, what's it for? November the 11th to the 17th. <laughs> and as I always ask, if you like this reading, like, subscribe, leave a comment if you'd like to. That's all I'm going to say about that. Finished the boring introduction. I'm going to start right now with your reading. The first card you have you passed is the Queen of Wands. I absolutely love this queen. I love her so much. And she represents you. She represents you. She's just like you. Sorry if you're a man. I don't mean she looks like you. Her character's like you. That's what I mean. But yeah, she looks you straight in the eye. She's loyal. Uh, she can be fierce. She's very brave. And yeah, this is you. I love that you have this fuss. And I'm seeing you in this queen because... I am seeing an escape here. I'm not sure how long ago this escape was. I think you escaped from an ex that you were very, very unhappy with. You felt a bit trapped with them and you did make this escape. There was a big build up, I think. It took you a long, long time because I think you were really loyal to this person, especially at one time. And uh, yeah, it took you a long time to finally get away. And I think the fact that you were so loyal to this person that might have actually made it a bit harder for you to actually leave, you know, when the time came. Because, you know, I'm seeing a bit of covering up. I think maybe you covered up for them or you, um, you know, you might have covered up for what they were saying, their behaviour, something like that. You might not have told a lot of people what they were like. So because you've covered so much up, by the time you moved or left, you might have been thinking, well, maybe they won't believe me because I made them out to look um, fantastic or great or fine and they weren't but i didn't tell anyone but that's okay you're very brave you did this um okay this is what i'm seeing i'm seeing this very very clearly so i'll just tell you what i'm seeing i'm seeing you inside a really confined space not literally this is how you're feeling this is kind of illustrating how you're feeling um and um when you're inside that space it's like you imagine the outside to be really dark, really miserable, really negative. But I think once you reach the outside, once you finally got outside, you realize that uh, the opposite was the case, actually. So um, the reality was um, the reverse of what you thought it was. It was actually amazing outside. It was better outside. And that's what you realized. It was better being out of this situation. It felt scary to you while you're in there. You thought, oh, I'll stay, that's really scary. I'll just stay here, um, even though I'm not happy. I'm scared of what's going to happen, you know. But then you finally did, and you realize, actually, I'm free. It's a lot better here. So, um, and you know, I think while you're in this situation, no one could have told you that it's better on the outside. You had to experience it for yourself. And that's very, very common. When people are in a situation, in a love situation, they're stuck with someone, they're really unhappy, um, especially victims of all kinds of things. I'm not saying you were, but, um, you know, for example, people who are in that situation, um, people can say a million things. They could talk for years and years and years nonstop, all day, all night. No one is going to listen to them. They have to experience it by themselves. And that's what you have to. You did this. Finally, you got away. And now you're in your element. You're like this queen. And now that you've been through this really, really terrible time, you've been through so much, it, it's kind of like you feel as if nothing can hurt you now. It's like, I've been through everything. Nothing can hurt me now. What can hurt me now? And it's like, there's nothing to be afraid of now. I'm free. I'm not afraid. That That's what I'm getting. It's really, really beautiful. So, you know, I think you probably look a bit tired and, you know, you probably look at yourself in the mirror and think, oh, I look really tired because you've been through so much. But yeah, I do that every day anyway. But, um, you know, that's fine. You can sleep later. And the thing is, you can you can sleep soundly now. You can sleep well now. And when you're in this situation, you couldn't sleep. You couldn't sleep. It was so stressful now you're out so yeah you can you can sleep now and you can do so many things now that you couldn't do before really really beautiful okay so the next card you have you pass the six of wands yeah fantastic card you got through this you're on the other side 
um, I think, if this resonates with you. And uh, someone didn't like this. They didn't like you being on the other side of this. They didn't like you getting this victory. Uh, I think this is probably this person you left behind. Uh, you're a big support to them because this card can be about supporting with all these people in these wands, with these carrying these wands and supporting this man who's on the horse. So you supported this person for a long, long time, but no one was supporting you. No one was supporting you. And I actually think that it felt horrible at the time, this lack of support, but I actually think it was a blessing to you. And you're realizing that now because, um, you know, I think as you came out of this, you realize that having to be by yourself, you know, having to stand by yourself, that trained you to be able to stand by yourself when you really, really needed to be by yourself, which is now. And so you were trained up. You knew how to be by yourself. You knew all of that. You're comfortable with yourself. So, um, which is what the star card can be about, a woman who's comfortable with herself. So um, I absolutely love this for you. This is victory and it's true victory. It's absolutely true victory because you're standing up and you're standing up on your own by yourself. Absolutely beautiful. I love this so much. I really hope this does resonate with you. Okay, so the last card you have your past is the star. So another beautiful card. Um, so yeah, you're getting yourself back. You're finding yourself again. It was a process. You're out of this, but you still had a long way to go in terms of, um, you know, taking care of yourself and what you needed to do and all sorts of different things. Um, so I think you're on a self-discovery mission. Uh, I'm seeing spiritual discovery here as well. So I think you're building that up again for yourself. Every level of your life, you're building up, but you also had a lot of peace around you. So you had the peace to let you do this. Very peaceful, very calm, and you deserve this peace. You deserve the peace and you deserve the time to do this. And when you were with this person, you didn't have that peace, you didn't have that time. You know, you were, you had your time taken away from you, you had someone talking to you, you had someone asking you questions, you had someone questioning you, telling you you shouldn't do whatever. But now you've got the peace to do whatever you want. Absolutely fantastic. I hope this resonates once again. Now, I think you knew you had the potential to do something and this is something quite big. Uh, I don't think you'd take an action on this. It's something that's about uh, people seeing you being recognized because you've got the six of wands and you've got this card, card as well. Um, yeah, you were just planning things, I think. You know, you're not quite ready to put this out into the light because this is starlight. The sun hasn't come out yet. So I think you had some plans in place. They weren't totally clear yet. They weren't illuminated yet. You're just thinking. Um, I think you might eventually, you know, I think you might eventually teach some other people in some way. That's that's what I'm seeing here. Might not. It doesn't have to be traditional teaching. It can be... Um, you know, it can be writing a book, you teach people through that, or it can be doing a podcast or something, something where people are going to be watching and learning and listening. Um, you know, this woman's a star, you know, she doesn't, she's comfortable with who she is, she doesn't mind having eyes on her. So with this thing that you're planning on doing, you're going to either have a lot of eyes on you, or if you're writing a book, eyes on that, eyes on whatever it is you're doing. And I think you're preparing for that. You absolutely weren't ready when you were with this person. Now you're kind of coming out of your shell, coming into yourself, and you're training yourself. You're getting yourself ready to achieve, to achieve this goal that you're trying to achieve. That's what I'm seeing. Sorry, I'm slurring my words here because I'm quite tired. I'm going to keep going. Okay, so, okay, yeah, there's another thing here. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of a warning here. Because uh, sometimes this woman in the star card, she can be a little bit vulnerable. There are two sides to this. So that's the side I'm seeing in this. So um, I think there might be a message that comes to you. I think it might be an email. Just watch out because I think someone might tr try to offer you something. It might be too good to be true, I think. Uh, and I think if you're in this process, if you're still in the process of getting yourself back on your feet, getting yourself together financially, 
uh, you know, you might be uh, buying things if you're starting out in a new place again, or you might be selling things even. So if you're in the middle of all of that and you've got lots of messages coming in and out and people calling you saying, oh, can you come pick up this table and how much is that and whatever, just be aware of a message that comes in. It might be an offer and it might be too good to be true. It might be some kind of silly offer for something, uh, a very high offer for something you're selling or something, and it might be a trick behind it or something like that. So just be very, very careful of who you talk to, who you open up to, who you tell your details to, keep them very, very hidden. Uh, that's the warning there. Um, and if you get any messages that give you a kind of like, oh, that I, I don't like the feeling I get around this, that's your instincts. Follow your instincts, follow your intuition and block, delete, do not open anything that makes you feel even slightly strange because that's your warning system. Okay, so I'll move on to the next one, which is uh, the Two of Swords, which is the present. And uh, yeah, so there's conflict in this card, obviously. Um, okay, someone's in, in denial. Someone's in denial. That's what I'm getting in this card. They've got their arms up like this woman in a cross. They say, no, no, I'm in denial. I don't want this to happen. I've got my blindfold on. I'm not listening to you. This is not happening. It's like a child, you know, when they have their fingers in their ears and they say, la, la, I can't hear you. That's the kind of thing I'm seeing here. Uh, I think you've tried to talk to them. You might still be. And they're just not listening. They just don't want to listen. If this is this axe, and I think it might be this axe, because I think you probably still have a lot to sort out with them, because I'm seeing you trying to sort out things with them. You're trying to say, okay, uh, who's going to do this? Who's going to have this? Uh, shall we split this in half and shall you have this? And, and they're like, no, not listening. I don't want to hear. Uh, I don't want anything to do with this. That's what they're like. It's, it's like they're like this great big rock that's just sitting there and not moving. And you're trying to kind of move all around them and trying to get them to move and pick them up. And they're just sitting there. That That's what I'm getting. You know what? The strange thing is about this is that um, they don't want you back. That's not what they want. I'm not getting that. They're just trying to make things difficult. And I think what I'm seeing is, yeah, they can't stay like this forever. They're going to have to move. Because if you look at this woman, she's got these really heavy swords and she's going to have to drop them at some time. So they're going to have to change at some time. But uh, what I'm seeing is they don't want you back, but they don't want you to move on. That's what I'm getting. Because I think if they mess everything up and they kind of uh, mess up your mind and you have no energy to see anyone and you're kind of stuck in this limbo and you can't move forward um, that means you can't see anyone else you can't find anyone else and you can't move on in your career because you might be waiting for uh, a financial settlement or you might be waiting to uh, you know do these practical things before you can move forward there might be money that you're sharing that you need your share of or something all kinds of different things lots of practical things I'm seeing now and they're just sitting there, they're not doing anything. And you know, you need something done about this. That's what I'm getting. Um, so yeah, they're going to have to make some kind of move forward. They absolutely are at some time. They can't just sit there forever. They're not thinking logically. They're not thinking logically. Okay, so uh, I hope this doesn't resonate because it's really horrible. Okay, so the next card you have your presence is the Seven of Pentacles. Yes. Yeah. This is another reason why they're stagnant, I think. If this is some kind of settlement, if this is some kind of ex, maybe you're married, maybe you weren't, you might own some kind of things together, assets, it's something like that. That's what I'm seeing. Uh, if it doesn't resonate, I'm sorry. This is just what I'm seeing here. I know it's specific. Um... They don't want to lose money either. They don't want you to move on. They don't want you back, but they don't want to lose money. It's it's really crazy because you're both going to have to share things if this is the situation that I'm seeing. Uh, because, you know, if you look at this man, he's looking over what he's built up. He's got all this money next to him. I don't know if they've got lots of money or not, but that's how they see things. 
and there are all these coins next to him and there's just one in front of him. So they might be thinking, oh, I've got all these coins now and if I go through this process, I'm only going to have one or very little. So what they're doing is they're just sitting there and not doing anything so that uh, they don't get the result. But a result is going to have to happen at some time. They're going to have to move through this process at some time, but they're not. So I think, um, I actually think, uh, yeah, I hate to say this to you, but I think you might have to just be a little bit patient actually, because if they're in this kind of, no, 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 I'm really stubborn, I'm not changing, I'm not moving, I'm really angry, and I'm not going to do anything. If, if they're like that, if they're in that mode, they can't keep that up forever. They can't keep on in this really angry, fierce kind of uh, stubborn mode. It's, it's too exhausting. They're going to have to relax eventually. And I think, you know, that's when they're going to start to move. Um, but until then, uh, there are things you can do by yourself. You're just going to have to concentrate on that, I think. Um, you know, obviously, if there's a really difficult financial situation and you need things right now, uh, you might have to start proceeding um, somehow. But uh, otherwise, they are going to come to reality. They are going to have to move and they will because they're going to have to. OK, so the last card you have your presence, the Knight of Cups. OK, uh, this is... This feels very sensitive, it feels very quiet, it feels very soft, very sweet, a bit nervous, that's, that's what I'm getting here. Um, yeah, sensitivity, I'm getting the words handle with care here as well. Okay, so I think you might have been around a group of people, I think you might be around them maybe every week or something, it's, it's someone you, a group you see regularly, I think. Now. In this group, I actually think someone has a bit of a crush on you. Uh, I think you know who this is. I think you've spoken to them a few times or you've tried to. They haven't said much to you or maybe they haven't said anything. You've tried to say a few things. Maybe they mumbled. I don't know. Because what I'm getting around them is they're a very shy person, actually. Very, very, very shy. Uh, you know, they think a lot. They're actually very intelligent. They dream. They imagine. But they don't speak up, they don't say anything, they're very nervous, very shy, they're that kind of a person. Uh, they might have said something, but hardly anything. So, um, you know, and I think they're quite intimidated by you, actually. They've got this big crush on you, but they're afraid. Um, so, yeah, I think you know who this is, because I'm picking up on a little bit of awkwardness between you. Uh, especially coming from them, so, and you pick up on this, you feel very awkward around them, because they, they're awkward around you, so you pick that up from them. And, uh, yeah, they see you as this really big, um, someone who's kind of higher up than them, or they're a little bit intimidated, I keep on seeing that. Uh, they feel as if they can't reach you, I'm getting that as well, because uh, they're just too shy. They could come and talk to you, but they're very, very shy. Um, yeah, I don't think this is the person for you. I really don't. Um, and I think you know that. You need someone who's a lot stronger than this. Um, if they do eventually approach you, uh, I think that's where this handle with care comes in. So, you know, just treat them gently. I know you will, but that's the message here. Um, and the other thing I'm seeing in this card is, it's, it's kind of um, working along with the, with the star card. There's creativity here creativity so and I was seeing that in the star card as well with these things that you wanted to do as some kind of teaching thing uh, whether that was a book or a podcast something like that and now that you've got this knight of cups which is a very creative card that's giving you an extra kind of sign that if you do that it, it it's going to be um, something that's going to work out well for you uh, you do have a future with that. So that's another sign to tell you that, yes, keep on moving in that direction if that's what you want to do. Very, very good sign. Very successful it will be if you do this. It's Whatever it is, it's going to take time. But, um, yeah, it's that's just another sign. Okay, so uh, the first card you have for your future is uh, the Eight of Pentacles. 
Yes. Okay. The interesting thing here is um, I really feel for this person in the Knight of Cups because they're just really shy. They, they don't have a lot of confidence. Um, but I think what they might be trying to do is, um, yeah, I think they're trying to attract some attention to themselves by the way they look maybe. So if, if, if you're getting someone around you who's really, really shy, but they're beautifully dressed, they're perfectly dressed, you know, like the Knight of Cups is amazingly dressed. He's immaculate. You know, he's got shiny armor, lots and lots of colors. Everything's all neat and perfect. And, you know, if you look at the Eight of Pentacles, quite often I see that big pole or that big tree, uh, sort of like a beacon, if that makes sense. It's, it's sort of like um, a big lighthouse with all these shiny coins all over it, which, and that's standing out. So people see it, it stands out to people. It's very big and beautiful and lots of gold. So I think what's, what, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make themselves look attractive and stand out. And they're working very hard to do that because this is the working card. But, you know, unless they can talk, unless they get their point across, they're not going to be noticed, not by you or anyone else. You know, you can't read a book that has a beautiful cover, but there's no words inside. There's no point. What's the point? Um, you know, I really do feel sorry for them, actually. And I really hope they can do something for themselves or get some kind of help, actually. But uh, in the meantime, I just think... It's, you know, it's it's awkward for you as well, because I think with this person around you, they're making this a group very awkward as well. So uh, I'm not sure what you're going to do about that. But yeah, it, it's not working, whatever they're doing. So and yeah, they're not the person for you. And you know that. OK, so the next card you have your future is the page of wands. OK, so when you have the eight of pentacles and the page of wands together like this usually it means that to get to where you want to go work wise because you've got the eight of pentacles which is the work card did i say the eight of wands i'm trying to say the eight of pentacles and the page of wands i can't remember if i messed that up or not i don't know but i think you know what i'm talking about so um so yeah with those two cards together it's like to get to where you want to go in work um you're going to have to do a bit of extra study because the page of wands can be a student. Uh, he's all about, you know, trying to work to get up higher in a higher position. And he's doing that by studying. So, um, yeah, to get to where you want to go, you're going to have to do this extra learning or extra study or something like that. Now, it doesn't have to be formal learning, but you are going to have to do this, I think, to get to where you want. Um, if you're already planning on doing some formal learning, you know, going back to university or whatever, I actually think it'd be really good for you to do that because um, I'm seeing, this is what I've got in my head. There's a group of people, they're all very like-minded and they're all talking about the same thing. And they're talking about this thing that's interesting to you, whatever this is that you want to achieve on a quite a deep level, on a very interesting level. And I don't think you have many people around you who understand this subject or this industry uh, on that kind of level. Maybe people understand it superficially or up to a certain point, but not on this very deep level. So I definitely look into more formal learning if that's what you want to do, because it's not just about what you learn. This is about who you meet. There are some really interesting people there uh, maybe even some lifelong friends. I think you might make some really good friends there. So, um, yeah, I think it'd be really refreshing for you to be surrounded by people who understand you properly and understand this thing that you want to do. So think about that very, very carefully. I know there's a lot of cost involved in, uh, in formal learning, but if you can manage that, uh, yeah, I think it'd be really fantastic for you. Okay. So, the last card you have, your future, is the Eight of Swords. Yes. Horrible card. I hate seeing this at the end. But um, I think this probably has something to do with this money, finances. And I think this is this this is this stalemate with this ex because she's not moving. So, you know, that's what a stalemate is. No one's moving because someone's kind of stuck. And this woman's stuck in the mud. She's not going anywhere. So, yeah. And, um, yeah. 
You might have to put your plans on hold once again while you're sorting this out. Uh, again, if there's some kind of settlement that needs to be sorted out, uh, I, I think you're just going to have to wait for a while. That's what I'm getting. If you are in this position and you do feel quite, do feel stuck like this woman, um, I think this card's showing you that um, there's still a lot you can do while you're waiting. You know, because this woman has this blindfold on and, and, and this kind of rope around her, or whatever this is, but they're loose. She could easily take them off if she wanted to. So I think there are things that you could do while you're waiting. And, you know, if you don't, um, if you don't try and get forward, get ahead and do something, if you just sit there, that means they're winning. Because that's what I've seen in the Two of Swords, that they want to stop you. They want to sit there doing nothing to stop you from moving forward in your life, whether that's with your career, with studying, with, you know, seeing anyone else, going out, to, going out with someone else, getting a new relationship, anything at all. They're trying to stop that. And if you sit there stuck and you don't do anything, then you're letting them win. So there's something you can do. There's absolutely something you can do. So don't let them stop you from doing that. And, and if you move forward, if you keep on doing things, uh, you might find that in that time, uh, the stalemate's broken and you've already gotten quite far ahead. But yeah, don't wait for them. Don't wait for them to move. Do something, even if it's tiny. Uh, you know, and just remember, you're the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands moves forward right from the beginning. You've got that, and and they're the rock. They're a rock, and you're the Queen of Wands. So, so Scorpio. Um, I hope this resonated. I know that was a little bit crazy, a little bit scattered. I'm not really, um, you know, as I should be at the moment. But yeah, I wanted to get this out for you anyway. So, uh, if you like this reading like, subscribe, leave a comment if that's what you like to do. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching.